Hello everybody, this is Pun Frugal Streamer, and I have a new video for you. This is a video about request. Uh, uh, someone was asking about how to remove noise from your microphone in Streamlabs OBS. I was having a lot of issues with background noise, and so I'm going to go through this real quick. I'm going to try to go through this as quickly as possible, so bear with me. It might get a little long, but uh, the first thing I want to show you and I want to discuss is controlling the volume of your microphone. A lot of people have a problem with turning their microphones way up. You don't need to do that. You want to try to find a nice medium. And I really recommend you starting at mid-level at about 50% volume and then either increasing it or decreasing it based on what you want. Now, as I have my microphone, is currently set at 50% in Windows. And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of background noise, even though I have a computer that's literally no more than a foot and a half from the microphone here to the side and I have a fan on the floor that's blowing air up underneath my desk okay normally you would think you would hear a lot of noise uh, but I, because I have my volume set at 50% and I have the microphone you know at about half a hands at a finger's length from my mouth you don't need a whole lot of volume because that's you know these microphones when you're talking into them they're designed to be right here right there you know you don't need them sitting way off uh you know in front of you because you're going to have to increase the volume to get the the needed level in obs and therefore you're going to introduce more background noise that's why i recommend you get into something like a scissor stand okay so you can kind of move it around and you can put it where you need it all right so yeah i'm going to hush real quick and i want you to just kind of see where the level is i'm going to move let me uh switch to my streaming pc and I'm going to move this down. And I'm going to let you see where my level actually is. Okay, so you can barely see right here that the background noise just come in right at the very end, right at the very beginning there of the VU meter. And that's good. So that's very little background noise actually coming in, and you probably, can, you probably barely can't hear it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at my microphone level where it's at. You can see that it's at the green and beginning of the yellow. Um, that's actually pretty good. You could add a little bit of gain to it. Um, you try to get it up here about where mid is and uh, mid yellow. And that's where, where the developers say you really should try to keep your microphone at. So I will actually go and let's add some filters to this. So filters is where we're going to be at from now on. And here is the first filter that we have and that is the gain filter so i'm going to go click on that add that gain filter and then i'm going to give myself about a 3 db boost all right so that's 3 db right there and now you can see that i'm up going into the yellow and that's kind of where i want to be at right there that's why i'm pretty happy with that all right so that gains there but now my background noise is also going to increase as a result. That's something you need to keep in mind. So I'm going to be quiet again, and I'll now show you the bottom end of that VU meter, and you'll actually see more noise coming in. All right, so that is the effect of gain, is that you do increase more background noise, because essentially you're turning up the volume of the microphone. Uh, you could also do this on Windows if you wanted to bring it, and like mine is set at 50 right now, if you wanted to bring it up to about 53 or 54, it's the same effect, okay? But here you can actually measure it, and you can adjust it inside of OBS to where you want it, okay? So then the next thing you want to do is go back to your filters, and let's look at the other filters here that we have. Now we have gain. Uh, the next thing, and the noise suppression is probably the one that I would say between this and compressor, both of these you're going to want to use. Okay, so noise suppression, let's go ahead and open that one up. And so we've got this added. Now you can turn these off anytime by just clicking on the eyeball. Okay, and you just get the line through it. That means it's not, it's turned off or it's, uh, and you know, turn it back on by clicking on it again and you get the eyeball without the line. Anyway, so here's noise suppression. Now this defaults at minus 30. You may hear that my microphone sounds a little different than what it did before. Now before I, I, I had no processing at all, right? Now I'm doing this noise suppression and it kind of has this digitally kind of effect to it. It's kind of weird, all right? Uh, that's because there's so much suppression being uh, processed right now. Uh, so let's lower this. Let's bring this back up to zero. Okay, so no, this is no suppression, right? 
And as you can see, my background noise is coming in. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to turn this down until it goes away effectively. All right, so essentially minus five looks like it'll work. All right, so that's essentially suppressed that background noise that was coming in. All right, this is really good for something like fan noise. Okay, it's kind of designed for that. Really cool. I like this a lot, and it's really helpful. So I essentially don't have any more background noise in. Okay, that's good. All right, now there is another uh, noise offender that a lot of people have to deal with on streams, and especially gamers that have mechanical keyboards, okay? Mechanical keyboards, they have that clackety sound, are really loud, okay? Some are louder than others, but you can actually use noise gate, noise gate to get rid of that. So I'm gonna bring up noise gate filter, all right? All right, so the noise gate filter here, um, so basically what, how does it work? Close threshold, or let's start with open. So right now it's set for minus 26. That means Anything that is below minus 26 dB as detected through the microphone through OBS will not be uh, heard. Okay, but if it goes above that minus 26, then they'll open up and the microphone sound will get, then get processed through. Okay, minus 26 is actually pretty high. Okay, yeah, I'm only going about 10 dB and you can end up having part of your voice cut off because it's not hit that threshold yet. Let's lower this a little bit. Matter of fact, let's lower this all the way down because I want you to hear the clackety clack of my keyboard. Okay, and I'm just kind of hitting the space and you know, doing like I would normally do for gaming with the WASD and all that stuff. And you can hear that it's just really loud, right? All right, so let's go ahead and let's try to get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to bring the open threshold and I'm going to bring it up until the noise disappears on the VU meter. And I'm just going to continue clacking on my clacking on my keyboard here. All right, so right there, about a minus thirty-four, it uh, it went away. So I'm I'm actually talking. You should be able to hear my keyboard as I'm talking because I've released that uh, threshold and it's open, but you can hear the keyboard talking. But when I stop talking, it goes away. All right, so that is what that does for you. So um, if you want to set a close threshold, um, you can bring this up, and I would recommend you set this at about 5, maybe 6 dB above. And so when you quit talking and the threshold goes below that minus 41, it will then activate the gate, and you won't have sound coming through. All right, so you get attack time. Again, that's how quickly it uh, initiates the gate or it releases the gate in this instance, the whole time is 200 milliseconds, okay? And that, and once the sound goes below the closed threshold, then it will release, and that's how long it will take it to release for 100, 150 milliseconds. Recommend just leaving these default. I don't really see any reason to adjust these, and they work well. All right. But that is what noise gate will do for you. Really nice. All right, so let's close this out. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I don't want to close it out. All right, so I've got a gain, I've got suppression, I've got noise gate. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you is, actually not the last thing I want to show you, I've got two things to show you. So this, next thing is compressor. This is much needed in microphones, and I think actually compression should be used for almost everything in varying forms. Uh, I have a video that talks about compressor. I will give you the card for that. You can click on that and it goes into the nitty gritty or compressor but essentially all compressor does is it pads any sound that goes above a certain threshold and you can set a ratio of how much compression you want that to happen once that threshold is met okay and you can set the attack and the release same same uh, ideas with attack and release uh, this one also you have an output gain that you can actually set an additional gain in this if you need to uh, now the side chaining and ducking here uh, say you have a Spotify channel, and this is exactly why how I use it. Um, if you have a Spotify channel uh, for music, okay, and you want it at a certain volume, but you don't want it to be at that volume when you're speaking, you can actually set a compressor to that Spotify and then set your 
microphone as the ducking device. Okay. When you set that microphone as a ducking device inside of Spotify, that Spotify audio channel in, in Streamlabs OBS, whenever you talk, it will lower this by whatever you set the threshold to. And you can play around with it and, and, lo and you know, see at what level the volume you're happy with once you start speaking. And when you quit speaking, then the compressor will, you know, release and the volume will get back up to normal with Spotify. Really great, and I use this in my own streams all the time. All right, so that is what compressor does for you, and it's really cool. And I think for your microphone, you ha you, it's, you have to have it. I really do, because if you get excited, somebody drops a big thousand dollar donation on your stream, you're going to get excited. You're going to yell, and your viewers are going to freak out, you know, because their eardrums are now blown. But if you have compressor, and it, if you shout, then it's going to hit that threshold and it's going to compress it so that it doesn't blow your viewers or drums out. Uh, so I like compressor a lot and I think it's definitely needed. The last thing I want to show you is VST 2.x uh, plugins. Okay. So we now have the ability to use VST plugins, which, you know, there are so many different kinds of plugins out there. Uh, hundreds of them. Uh, I'm going to show you Reaper plugins. So if you go to, Oh, let me close this real quick. Hide it. If you go to uh, Reaper plugins, just do type, do a Google search for Reaper plugins, and you'll go to the Reaper.fm replugs. This is the website you're going to want to go to, and here's the two that you can download. I recommend this download in a 64-bit. Okay, and this is an executable file. Once you download it, you install it. It'll install to your program files on your C drive or wherever you point it to. I recommend just doing it in C drive. It's not a huge file at all. But it'll install a, a number of plugins that Reaper makes that OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS, whichever one you use, will automatically detect it. Okay, so once again, to get to that, go to your mic aux, click on the filters, and then go to the plus sign and add, go to VST 2.x plugin, hit done. And then you're going to get this UI here where you can actually select the plugins. And these are all the Reaper plugins that was installed. Like see here, you got a compressor, you got a MIDI controller, you got a delay. This is an EQ. This is a uh, fast Fourier transfer uh, processor, which is kind of like an EQ. And I'll bring this up. It's actually pretty cool. And this is real time. My microphone, you can actually see the, fre the frequency of my microphone in real time. And you can see the roll off here is right at about 2000. Hertz and really between uh, 100 and 1000 is where the bulk of my voice is at. And if you have these crazy peaks like this, you can actually set a, a point here and you can actually use this to lower that point down. And you can kind of see how that's now lowered that certain area. And you can move it and try to affect it and try to get a little flatter response. Uh, so that, that's what that does. I, I kind of think it's cool. I, you know, I like it a lot. Now, that is just one instance that you can do. You can also go in, and this is really what I wanted to show you. Now, this is another noise gate. Um, and I think this noise gate is actually better than the one in uh, uh, Streamlabs OBS because this gives you visual, a visual, a nice visual display or UI of your noise and how you can cut it off very easily. So I'm going to show you that. You bring that up and hit this open plug-in interface. And here is the... Uh, plug in now i'm going to quit talking because this is my microphone level here also over here and you'll see that my background noise you know it'll show the background noise that's still coming in actually no it's not because i have a gate set <laughs> hold on a sec let me turn that off now it'll do it <laughs> crazy right all right so let me hush i just turned the gate off that i had set in obs all right, so there is my background noise. It's about right there. So what I'll do is I'll slide this little guy up to above it a little bit, and that is your threshold level that you set, and that's where your gate will open and close. So I'm going to set it a little above it um, so that when I speak, it'll then go above this little slider, and I'll be able to hear it. And it gives you a little dB level here of where you have it set. Currently, it's at minus 54. A couple other things here, uh, attack and hold, release is the same as before. 
Well, the one thing is two things I wanted to show you here is your low pass and your high pass filter. Okay, low pass filter right now, anything below 20,000 hertz is being registered on my microphone. Uh, likewise, for high pass, anything above zero is being registered by, uh, by the mic. So essentially, they're cut off. Okay, so if you, but you want to use this, um, say you have a lot of low noise coming in on your microphone, you want to get rid of a lot of background noise that you just can't get the noise suppressor to get rid of. You can actually take this high pass and you can use this to cut out some of that low end hum or whatever. So I'm going to, uh, again, stop talking and let the background noise settle in. And you should see it lower as I begin to increase this up, say around 200 hertz, it should start to lower. So you see it did lower a lot. Um, I recommend if you have a lot of low end noise to use this filter and uh, it will it will lower that a little bit. And once you will lose a little bit of low end out of your microphone. But generally speaking for voice, um, below 200 hertz isn't a big deal. Um, so this is great. Likewise, if you have a, high, a lot of high end noise coming in, uh, which probably won't happen per se, but you could use this low pass filter to set something, say, uh, uh, you know, above 3000, you want it to cover above this, like it now it's set to 22, 2500, uh, anything above that will get cut out. Okay. And you can use that. Uh, that's what that, that other fur plugin shows because you have a frequency spectrum real time of what your microphone is seeing. And you can kind of use that to judge where you need to set your high pass filter at. Okay. So anyway, so I usually don't use that though. I don't really have a problem with a lot of high end noise. All right. So this is probably the, in terms of using noise gate, I would actually recommend you using this if you can, because it does give you a better representation of your background noise and you can set it and adjust it. And I just like it better. I, I really do. And plus the, I like using the high pass filter. So, but that is it, uh, really, guys. That's all I wanted to show you. Uh, it's uh, you know a couple of these little filters in here that really do a lot to help your microphone get rid of unwanted noise and give you a little more professional sound. Uh, so if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll try my best to answer them. I do appreciate everybody taking the time to uh, watch the video, and I do hope it helped you out. If it does, please make give a comment below. Hit the like. And if, you know, you want to see more of these tutorials for Streamlabs OBS, hey, subscribe to my channel because I'm releasing them all the time. So anyway, guys, that is it. This is Punter Frog Streamer. Have a great rest of your week. Be safe out there, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.